Welcome to. <laughs> Welcome to Whispers from the Den. Stop. Whispers from the Den. We scoot up here. Episode three. Yeah, I think we're in episode three. Yep. Um, and it's I, uh, the boy Alec. <laughs> <laughs> I. I the boy. I Harry. No, we're not. I'm not this time. I'm I the robot. Grandmaster Grandpa Yezabot 2.0. <laughs> Grandmaster Grandpa. <laughs> that's good. That's a good nickname. And I'm Badger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, look at him. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oof. He's putting it all out there. Yeah, this will be good. I'll put this on, on the display. podcast. This is real time. Let's see. Don't mind my dog's balls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's appropriate. Yeah, Badger. He just doesn't care. Nah. God, put on some pants. We have to make him some with short legs. Mm. <laughs> Would a dog wear pants like this or like this? <laughs> okay, so this go around we have, um, we're talking, we're doing character analysis, mm-hmm. pretty much. That's a fancy way of saying we want to talk about something that we, we talk wanna, about all the time anyway. <laughs> we want to talk about Anakin Skywalker. Pre-Darth Vader. Pre-Darth Vader. This is part one of possibly a part two where we talk about... Alec has forced me into not talking about Darth Vader. It's good. In a way. I was inspired by uh, a Reddit post that was a actually, image from 4chan. There you go. I'm getting to it. Okay, I just want to make sure. Which I'm not going to elaborate on until the end of the episode. Um, but Anakin is one of my most favorite characters from the Star Wars series. So even when he practically becomes Space Hitler, you're still a fan? Yeah, I mean, I'm even more of a fan when he hits Darth Vader. He says he's even a fan pre-Darth Vader. Oh, okay, even a fan gotcha. So you're, Vader. you're... So, c- and conventionally speaking, you're a fan of Anakin before he gets cool. That's how a lot of people would see it. <laughs> how not how say, a lot of people yeah, would see it. Okay. That's not how I see it. Right, and I'm in the same boat. But, um... Yeah, a lot of people don't like uh, Hayden Christensen, Anakin. <laughs> He's fine. Give the boy a break. Yeah, that's how yeah. I see it. Not hard. It, it's not easy working with old George. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Give the kid a fucking break. Yeah, all he, does, all he wants to do apparently is just you know be a farmer. I don't know how he got wrapped up in being the role of one of the most important characters in any film franchise ever. You know, maybe we should have looked that up before we started a podcast, because now I'm kind of curious. Come on, that would be a good thing to look up. How did Hayden Christensen get wrapped up in all this? He was just a little boy. Wait. No, he wasn't. Does he play the little boy? No. No. That's the kid from Indiana. Yeah, he's been arrested. That's the kid from Indiana. Hayden Christensen's not from Indiana. No. If only. So Hayden Christensen shows up in episode two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think the only one who's... Consecutively through all three would be Mace Windu, Ian McGregor, or Obi Wan. Uh, well, <laughs> Natalie, Portman. Here. Natalie, Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman. She's in all of them. She's a babe. Uh, She's cute. That's the only important people. Okay. It says here Hayden Christensen was born in '81, Vancouver, British Columbia. Wow, wow. he's Canadian. Yeah. Um. Wish I was born in Vancouver. Me His too. biggest break was a major part in the Fox Family Network's Higher Ground in the year 2000. On this series, Hayden showed off his acting talent as a teen who was sexually molested by his stepmother and turns to drugs in despair. Later, he appeared in the television movie Trapped in a Purple Haze the same year, where he co-starred with his friend Jonathan Jackson. Hayden also had a role in the film... The Virgin Suicides. Mm. Oh, I know that movie. In May tw- May 2000, it was announced Hayden would star as Anakin Skywalker in Attack of the Clones in tw- uh, 2002. Revenge of the Sith was 2005. I was I was in fifth grade. Wow. Well, we I were remember that. I, that movie will always be dear to my heart because my dad um, took me out of school to go see that movie. Wow. <gasps> what? Okay. You gasped. So... 
The star was chosen by director George Lucas because he felt Hayden had raw talent and good chemistry with actress Natalie Portman. Lucas stunned the movie world by picking the then-unknown actor after he had turned down such big names as Leonardo DiCaprio, Jonathan Jackson, and over 400 other candidates. Who is Jonathan wow. Jackson? I don't know. Big names such as Leonardo DiCaprio and Jonathan Jackson. Yeah, those are two names I hear together all the fucking Dude, time. Dude, Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm. You know what? I'm glad he picked somebody like a nobody. Oh, yeah. That's what I... I mean, that's one of the things that, like, the new ones keep getting, um, like, rave reviews over is, is picking little unknown, unknown people. people. Well, yeah, I mean, John Boyega has exploded since episode seven. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good for him. So Jonathan Jackson was in Nashville, Tuck Everlasting, Camp Nowhere, The Deep End of the Ocean, Dirty Dancing... Havana Nights, Riding the Bullets, and General Hospital. Those aren't big roles. I've never even, yeah. I mean, well, hey, they're bigger roles than I've ever had. I don't mean, I'm not trying to shit talk. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, do you see him hanging out, bumping elbows with Leonardo DiCaprio every Man. Saturday? If, if they had Leonardo DiCaprio, I probably wouldn't be an Anakin fan. Really? I like Leonardo DiCaprio. I, I think, think he would have done a good job he, well, in this alternate universe. He wouldn't have been the Anakin we have today. No. no. I think that kind of... No name gives him more of a character because I mean that's pretty much what Baby Anakin was in Episode One. Yeah, he was just this. He was a farm boy. Yeah, a little kid who a slave boy, a nobody, a little, a little sand boy. Well, Hugh McGregor's a big name, and I think he did great as Obi Wan. I didn't so. know he was a big name before I that. Either. I didn't. That How was my that, that was my first okay. exposure to him. He's huge. Oh yeah, Oof. he's amazing. <laughs> I love you, and McGregor. I want so bad. We'll get back to Anakin. Well, yeah. <laughs> I want so bad for there to be a, a pre-episode four, you and McGregor in the desert movie. Dude, we so can do an Obi Wan podcast. Bad. Oh, we have to. I wonder what you McGregor was doing before Star Wars. I don't know. That's why. That's why me and Ethan are like, well, we didn't know who he was before. Well, because I didn't see those movies till like. I was older, like, after I already seen Moulin Rouge and shit. So oh, I already okay. know, knew who Hugh McGregor was. Right. But, yeah, I didn't get taken out of school that. to go see that shit. My mom's like, that's nerd shit. I mean, shit. I knew um, Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. But and, God. you know, uh, Does, He holds the record for being in the most movies ever. Samuel L. Jackson's in 12 movies a year. God. On average. I just made that up. Oh, but you believe I'm me, didn't believe you? <laughs> Who else was... You know, we're getting off topic. Yeah. Uh, That's we're a talking movie about a month. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you made it up. So it it's <laughs> not true. <laughs> Fake news. It was for a moment. <laughs> it was for a moment. <laughs> to you guys. It was. Your little baby hearts believed it. <laughs> you took, took it away from me. Uh, okay, so Anakin Skywalker. Uh, let's just start with the nitty gritty. Episode one. Sand. Sand and metachlorians. Sand. Sand. Meaty chlorians. Sand and space gunk. Meat chlorine. <laughs> <laughs> so, the midichlorians jizzed up inside Anakin's slave mom and made him, right? Well, I mean, there's some allusions to, in episode three, that it was Palpatine. That kind of, his big speech with Anakin at that little opera thing. Did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the White? No. I thought not. It's not a story the Jedi would tell you. It's a Sith legend. Darth Plagueis was a dark lord of the Sith, so powerful and so wise, he could use the Force to influence the midichlorians to create life. Palpatine do... Not Anakin's do, mom? but like he did he her said, with the force. He said, "Yeah, people with." I don't know the exact quote, but it's basically like he was so powerful with the force that he could create life. So you know how like God didn't fuck Mary, but he made. Am I swearing too much? God didn't. Um, doing. Uh, doing. Doing. <laughs> Mary, the Virgin Mary, but he got her pregnant with his magic powers. Okay. See. So Palpatine shot some midichlorians. George Lucas Inside. had a lot of time to sit on that. A random slave woman. Yeah, see, that's the part I, I... 
I get where I don't know if that's canon, but I mean, I felt like that's what he alluded to in episode okay. three. See, I, I'm I'm comfortable with there just being like a drifter mm. that did the mom actually yeah with his penis. I'm okay with that. Like there are tons of like it, when you when you like read into Star Wars and stuff, there are a ton of force sensitive people that don't get picked up by the Jedi or refuse to get picked up by the Jedi. Like it could have just been somebody who didn't know. Did Anakin's mom say anything when they came to get him? Like. He's a special boy, or I've never had sex ever. It's so weird. I got pregnant. Did I she say anything? I think anything? there was a little silent conversation between her and Qui Gon about that. That's what I thought. They had some kind of little talk, but I don't remember yeah. what was said. So. Well, I mean, I always assumed like she was a slave, and like they don't have great sex lives. Yeah. Well. Like, you know, like and you never raped. know. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose. And so, to me, like that kind of alludes to, like what happens to Anakin in a way is like. Yeah. He's born in, in that in that scenario that I think of Anakin being born in my head. Like he's born of this horrible thing, and like he's constantly pushing against it, yeah. trying to not. I can't. I don't know. Maybe that's too far. But. I don't know. It seems pretty tough. chipper to me. Yeah. When he was a little <laughs> little scamp. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was just getting around in that sand. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I mean, he's, a, he's, a, he's a pod racer. Oh, I'm Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> He didn't seem to. He didn't seem to be that bothered by the sand and his crack to me. That's true. So I would have been bothered. I would have. I hate sand and hotness. Sand's the worst. So. So he's a slave, but he doesn't seem to mind it. Kind of weird. Yeah. I, I, he there. He minds it a little bit. Like I he think he, just, he mostly minds that his mother's a slave. Yeah, like she's yeah. sad, and he doesn't want his mom to be sad. And he's always talking about exploring the galaxy and finding new places. I made this robot! <laughs> How the f do How the F do you make that robot? Well, that... Force sensitive. That's another thing that always kind of bugged me. It's like, there are a ton of protocol droids. Yeah. Like, but it's so impressive that he made 3PO. Yeah, I but mean, it doesn't make sense that he made 3PO because there's all the... all the other parts for the protocol droids. It would make sense, like, if he programmed 3PO... To be yeah. the way he is, but not like made. It's like, well, you know, so like, are technically Luke and Leia and C three PO? They're all root siblings. Yeah, because they're dad. They all have the same dad. Same mm-hmm. dad. I don't know. Do you think they invited him to Christmas? No, no. That's sad. Yeah, we didn't really have Christmas, did they? They could like give him a cup of oil or something. That's true. Oh, you mean they didn't celebrate it in that galaxy? Well, I mean, they never really got together. As a family. Except well, like there was the, end, I the, guess. the, uh, the Wookiees that, do. Yeah, the, the Wookiees have Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, they do. I'm You're pretty right. sure Christmas exists in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> there was a whole fucking movie about it. <laughs> okay, you got me. <laughs> okay. Ooh. So, so, Anakin wants to be a Jedi. Well, yeah, I mean, any... Any little farm slave boy, you know, wants to be something better. So he knows what the Jedi are. Like back they've heard then. stories. Like they are like, yeah, we know. Compared to in the new movies, Ray's like, whoa, they're real. <laughs> yeah. But back then, he knew. And he wanted it. So you've got pod racing here. Oh god. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Why? Indy cars, man. No. <laughs> he was from Indiana. <laughs> oh. Like what's what's what do you got pod racing up here for? I just thought because it was it was interesting his um, his and that comes back to Naboo too, but his skills as a pilot at such a young age. Okay. Do you think that's his force sensitivity? Did they ever like answer that? I feel like they did. I think that like Qui Gon brought that up some. Is like it was impressive because he was the only human that was pod racing. Yeah. Like it. I guess that humans didn't have the mental capacity to do it normally. Um, I mean, I would have died. Oh, yeah, I, c- I couldn't even kid. play the Lego pod racing. <laughs> Shoot, I hated those levels. Um, it wasn't as bad as the Hoth level. <laughs> yeah. Oof. <laughs> I don't know. Pod racing. It, that, boy, that was a long part of that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did enjoy the Nintendo 64 game. I never had it. Did it have all the cool sound effects? It did. Whoa! Not th- Coming in hot! <laughs> Got a blast! <laughs> Whoa! It hit the nitrous. <laughs> <laughs> Not those sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> it's working. 
I don't mean to goof on that kid. I love. I I think it's hilarious. I love it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. I'm not t- trying to bash on it. You know, I've not made a movie. No, I think it's hilarious. Yeah. Well, they. I guess they don't want me to think it's hilarious, but yeah. I do. But I love it. I love it. People give episode one a hard time. It's not that bad. It's better than episode two. Oh boy, episode two is really yeah romantic. Well, let's 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 start. Let's let's push through here then. If I mean, we've kind of discuss the the pod racing and the force sensitivity with the midi chlorines and whatnot. Okay. Well, next you put Jar Jar. Yeah. What? I don't what? know. Why did you write that? I, I Why are you pulling know. a George Lucas? Just throwing Jar Jar in there. And I, not I, I thought the 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 way that Ham and Anakin interacted was interesting until they decided to just completely drop it in Episode Two. What do you mean? Like him, him, Padme, and Jar Jar had like this little. I don't know. They're... Sora, Donald, and Goofy. Yeah. Okay. Did you not see that? Well, to me, it was always you know. I mean, that's what I felt like gave Jar Jar more of an important role was that Jar Jar was just dumb, like a kid. So that's why they were good dumb. with each other. Yeah, he was actually the Sith Lord. Dude. He was actually oh, yeah. the Sith Lord. He was manipulating. Time. That's whoever's listening to this. That's not a crazy fan theory. That's the truth. That's Did you guys know that Mace Windu is also Snoke? Kidding. I just want to no, make sure. That, you now know they're that. not going to believe us about the Jar Jar thing. Yeah. Well, so Way to go, dude. Uh, everybody's, everybody who's a real Star Wars fan has seen that video. Yeah. Well, if not, you know what? I'll link it in the description and you can watch for yourself. There's a lot of fake Star Wars gamer grills out there. I, that I, one seems legit, though. I accept the, um, like, f- I don't know if it's a fan theory or if, or if Lucas confirmed it, like, that Jar Jar was a key to Palpatine's plan. When it came they like, have George Lucas in a recording saying... Jar Jar's the key. He's the key to all of this. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Couldn't, I couldn't remember. Jar Jar is the key to all of this. If we get Jar Jar working, because he's a funnier character than we've ever had in any of the movies before. Well, <laughs> well yeah. Like, I, I'm willing to accept that, that he was a pawn used to. I mean, they did a lot of coke over. back then, but he said, okay. <laughs> dude, what if he just said that when he was, like, really coked out one night and, like... Jar Jar, man. He's the key to all of this, dude. <laughs> and, like, someone, like, recorded it and took it way too serious. <laughs> <sighs> oh, Jar Jar. The Me legend. so clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> I did love Jar Jar as a kid. Really? Dude. I adored him. I have a piggy bank of him. Oh. <sighs> God. I have a little action figure. Of Can I get the SH figure arts Jar Jar next? If they make one, yeah, I'll probably get it. <laughs> that Dude. would be awesome. Jar Jar is my mom's favorite Star Wars character. That's true. Yeah, she loves Jar Jar. She like we. I didn't grow up watching Star Wars because mom's like stupid nerd shit. What do you want? I want to watch that fucking bullshit. And we watched shit like Fargo and Psycho and horror. Horror, and we didn't. We she didn't like sci-fi, so we didn't watch it. But she happened to catch it on television, like probably CBS, you know, daytime TV playing it. And she felt very sorry for him because everyone was mean to him. And she's like, I know how that feels. <laughs> so she really sympathized with Jar Jar. Aww. And she's like, I don't want to watch these movies anymore. Everyone's mean to him. <laughs> <laughs> they kicked him out. Everyone's whole village kicked him out just because he's he clumsy. <laughs> she went really upset. Or was it something different? I don't know. His dark powers. It was probably his dark powers. They never said that. He said that it was because he was cl- his qu- it was because yeah. of clumsy. Clumsy. Mm-hmm. Clumsy. He's the one that said part of the plan. Clumsy. Maybe clumsy is language for evil. So you got okay. So I'm just I'm just kind of cutting through these because I don't really understand. Yeah. Episode. We can we can be done with episode one. That's okay. enough. Um, let's get to the comic. Yeah. Because you which you have got, you read yet? I have not read it yet. I went to good old Books a Million. We got myself. I picked up. Um, it's right here somewhere. Wait, the you comic about Darth Vader? No, no, no. The um, I got the comic between, Anakin and Obi Wan. It's right up here. Between Obi Wan and Anakin. Is it between one and two? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. It's Anakin's Padawan training, pretty much. Oh, okay. So we just skipping all this stuff about him meeting Padme and thinking she's a cutie and Palpatine and the Jedi were. No, we have seduction under Padme. His his um. Taste of women. Padme didn't seduce him. He no. seduced Padme. Did he? With the mini chlorians, dude. That's how I. That's what I thought. <laughs> Put him she, right up there. She was always like, "No, Annie. No, we can't. I love you as like a little brother. Like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't like, see it this way." And he's like, "I'm a man now." Isn't like a ten year difference <laughs> between them. Yeah. How, how just, it's a ten years. He, he like kept pushing it and kept pushing it, dude. I'm looking it up. 
Because, yeah, that's... I, I mean, I get... I thought it was give and take both ways. I think they both got to a point where I think they Anakin were... was more give, but Padme gave some, too. When? I mean, you can see the way she looked back. What like. specific scene? The one where he's in the shack... And scene 42, shot 11. And Jar Jar Lee. <laughs> I don't know. I just That's the kind of vibe I got. Okay, the age difference between Anakin and Padme is about five years. During The Phantom Menace, Anakin is nine. Padme is 14. They meet again, again, then again, ten years later in Attack of the Clones. Damn, ten years? Yeah. So, that, okay... So there's been ten years difference. They're both very different people now. Yeah. So I can I can kind of understand his infatuation then as he's aged, and I was like the first pretty girl. He called her an angel when he first saw her, and she's like, "Oh, if, if thanks." A, if a boy called you an angel, yeah, and you were fourteen, and he was no, he's nine. five. <laughs> Wait, he's nine. He's nine. Oh. He's nine, and you're fourteen. He's nine though. I mean. I'd feel kind of weird about that. I would too. It's different when you're 25 and he's 20. You're also space people. Okay, but is pedophilia's exist in space though? Pet like doesn't, doesn't make it, it right. Do, I mean, just does, we don't even it. have to have the discussion. How's that pedophilia? Right. You're still a child. All right, well I'm not in space. This is my <laughs> this is my version. This is how I feel about it. If I was 14 and a nine year old hit on me, I'd feel weird about it. Yeah, I would, I would be flattered like, oh, thank you, that's so sweet. But I wouldn't feel like, ooh. I'd just be like, aww. Like, I think it was cute. Like, I think a rabbit outside is cute. Huh. Not cute like, ooh, Me. look at that boy in the shower. Mm. His name is Ethan. Mm. <laughs> oh, that hair. <laughs> 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 He'd keep me warm at night. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Anakin and Obi-Wan, or Obi-Wan and Anakin. Whichever one. I think technically it's Anakin and Obi-Wan because A comes first. <laughs> well... Um, okay, so so I, I'm the only one that's read this. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this was cool, and finally being able to kind of see um, what a younger Anakin was like with Master Obi-Wan, like almost directly after episode one. Okay. Um, Anakin's still a boy. He's probably like 12, 12 or 13 well, Obi-Wan's in the still young, too, right? But like we'll a boy. But how old was Obi-Wan at that time? How old is Obi-Wan? Because, like, he just lost Qui-Gon, and he's like, oh, I'm in charge of this kid now? He's 35 <laughs> at the end of episode three. Okay. So, so ten years, he's 25. Wait. Oh, wait, wait. Wasn't it three years between two and three? He was born 57 years before the Battle of Yavin. So, just before A New Hope, he's 57. I mean, okay. okay. So, let's just say there's 20 years between episodes three and four. That makes him 37 at the end of episode three. Yeah, so he's in like his mid-20s, too. Yeah, so he's 24 in episode two. Wow. So that still makes him 14. And I guess he's still a Padawan in episode one. Well, I did yeah, not uh, get 14. Qui-Gon was his master. Yeah. So he and Padme were the same age. Yeah. I mean, that's cool, but I didn't see that. I never saw that that way either. Huh. I saw him as like, you know, maybe early 20s in episode one. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. thought Padme was like 19, which is why I thought it was weird. I thought there was like 10, they were 10 years apart. Yeah. I thought Padme was way older than Anakin. Mm. Okay. We got that figured out then. All right. Huh. Well, anyway, you get to see these this cool adventure of Anakin and Obi-Wan, um, and it starts out with Anakin wanting to leave the Jedi. Already. Already. First comment, first story. Okay. He's wanting to leave uh, the Jedi. and it, Like, you it's, just got here. Mm-hmm. And it's cutting back and forth uh, to a past time and the current time. Uh, and kind of explaining why Anakin wants to leave. He feels different. He doesn't fit in. Uh, he doesn't have any friends. He has all these expectations he's supposed to meet. Pretty much his only friend is Palpatine, who uh-huh. is the only one who sees any sort of potential and, like, celebrates that, whereas everyone else is trying to control him and tell him, you know, mm-hmm. take it a step down. 
But yeah, he's like kicking ass and taking names, and people are like, you know, you can't do that. Except for Palpatine. Except for Palpatine. Palpatine's okay. like, dude, keep doing that. <laughs> okay. That's gonna come back and buy Palpatine. Yeah. He's thrown down shaft. <laughs> That's my favorite scene in Star Wars. <laughs> I think that is my favorite scene in the whole six movies. That might be. That's in my top five. <laughs> when that old bastard gets thrown. Well, like where Darth Vader yeah. like picks him up over his head. Vader and, bomb. Like Vader bomb. tosses him down. It's like WWE SmackDown shit. And that's where they got that from. Going down. Really? Yeah, that's why they call it the Vader bomb. That's an actual wrestling move. I have no idea. I thought you just made that up. Nope. Huh? That's, that is an actual thing. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you know it's the same actor that plays Palpatine in all the movies? Good for that guy. He's probably the only actor to have achieved that. Yep. Feat. In all six. All six. Same guy. Same guy. Really? Yep. That's cool. Yeah. Well, in the first three, they made him look old as shit. Yeah. Yeah. Or, well, you know, four through six. Yeah, four through six. Yeah, it's just a ton of makeup. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Isn't that cool? That is really cool. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm wrong, point it out, but I, I've always believed that. I've read it some somewhere. It's the same guy that brought him back. We'll find out. Yeah. I'll look it up. I probably won't. That's okay. But that's, that's pretty much all that happened. I mean, I've only got the first collection. It's like one. I think that's all there was. No, it's definitely not over. Oh, really? It can't be. Huh. Yeah, it's a newer series. I'm pretty sure they're still going to go with it. Okay. Yeah, that's not too good to just quit. Okay. Um, but yeah, if you haven't haven't picked that up, you Please. need to read it. I do. I need to read I it. I recommend it. Um, and that takes us to episode two. So I feel like... And it can go through puberty. And it can go through puberty. Woo! Mm. Hayden Christensen. Oh, yeah. Let's Out go. time. Mm. So... You get to see his abs, yeah, and his pecs. I got those. Yeah. I, I like. We grew up on the prequels. Like, those were yeah. our like Star Wars growing up. So like, not me, not Paisley. She was too cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I think there's a nostalgia factor, but I don't. I don't. I also don't hate them. As much as a lot of people hate them, so I coming into Episode Two. I think, uh, especially in conjunction with the Clone Wars animated series, both of them, the uh, Janity Tartavosky and the um, the Cartoon Network one, yeah, the 3D one, mm. I think, I really think, like, looking at those, the prequels would have been done very well um, as a series instead of movies. Yeah, those Gindy Tartakovsky shorts are Tartakov. kick ass. Yeah. Freaking awesome. Yeah. So, like, for me, coming in episode two, like, for me, it's not just episode two. It's episode two, and then it's like those five seasons of animation plus the two from yeah. Genity. And Genity. I, I haven't seen you know outside of the uh, the two D animated ones. I've seen maybe four of the three D animated yeah. ones, and I know you keep telling me to watch it, but to me that's that's I just like couldn't get into it. I to want to I want to push through it and finish it yeah. off because I keep hearing great things about it, um, but unfortunately, I don't know anything about. So like with episode two. I mean, just to sum it up, like Anakin is stronger but cocky. Mm-hmm. Like he's gotten through the Padawan stuff. He knows he's good. He knows he's hot shit, and he's doing well. But the fight with Dooku at the end really sums it up for me. Like he's strong, he's powerful, he knows the Force, but he doesn't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. He gets his ass handed to him. Yeah, he can't save his mother. Like you've written down here, all he has left is Padme and Obi Wan with a bunch of, and yeah, a bunch of other old people, old men and women, who don't trust him yeah. and don't want to let him they don't want to trust him <laughs> yeah they don't want to trust him they keep restricting him um, so I get that like to me like the Clone Wars is just like I don't need all the, the I don't really need all the love and romance stuff I guess mm. but I, it makes sense you know coming in episode 3 or if like episode 2 it's all summed up in that, that third act you didn't like that scene the lake house no they get married they get married I just thought that was cheesy She's like, oh, Annie. Why do they need to get married? It was a secret. I don't know. It's hot. No one can know. Padme? I mean, yeah. hot. Yeah, she's hot, but I don't know. If I was trying to keep that secret, I wouldn't... Get married? I wouldn't get married. Yeah. So... Jedi aren't allowed to get married. Jedi aren't allowed to get married. But was married. she not allowed to? I mean, she's no, the No, she was totally fine. She can fine. do whatever she wants. Well, at that time, she's a senator. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Okay. She's done being queen. Well, she's never done being queen. That's true. Oof. So this is how democracy dies. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, coming off of that, end of the Clone Wars, 
animated series is, is really the one I'd like to talk about with Anakin because I really feel like that is like a definitive version of Anakin. So this is his step into manlyhood, would you say? I, I would I would say this is the step into like being the Anakin that people care about. Okay. Like, like people give a shit about. Like episode one and two, like he's he's a baboo. Mm-hmm. He doesn't Still know what he's learning. doing. He's cocky. He's like, oh yeah, I'm the chosen one. Whatever, whatever. But in the Clone Wars, like he's given actual responsibility. You know, I get bored. You know, I mean, being naturally, well, yeah. not naturally, but like just being good at shit and like excelling. Yeah. And like you feel like nothing's challenging you. You get bored, dude. Yeah. I feel like let's not forget that. Yeah. He's but, restless. And I think that's one of the like my first point here is Anakin is given a Padawan right off the bat when the Clone Wars start. Mm-hmm. And that's not never been done because he's still a Padawan. Yeah, because like Ahsoka's just there. Yeah, Ahsoka's a baby. She's just a youngling, and so like he he is given a Padawan as a distraction, both to keep himself busy, and to keep him out of everybody's hair. So it keeps him from <laughs> focusing on himself and his own power. Yeah. Okay. And what he's doing it keeps him it keeps him from being selfish. Now I don't grant I haven't watched it in a while. I'd like to rewatch it here soon. Uh, I don't know if that's the actual intent, but that's what it comes off as. Is he's okay. given this Padawan is to give him something to do because he he's excelling at everything else, and so like give him a Padawan. They need to catch up. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, give him a Padawan. Give him something to do. It's like um, like if you have a really smart kid, you know, you just give him something to do. You just Legos. Keep, you keep giving him Legos. Yeah, you, keep, <laughs> you give him computers, whatever. You just keep giving him shit, sketchbooks to do. If you have a really stupid kid, you don't have to give him that much stuff. No, you just give him a sketchbook like give me. Give him the big Legos. <laughs> the, yeah, the mega So he doesn't blocks. eat them. <laughs> give him mega blocks. <laughs> so, and I, I'm a big fan of the Anakin Ahsoka relationship. So uh, as as are many people. Yeah. So that's what a lot of this is going to be, for me, is going to be talking about and bouncing things off of you guys. So yeah. Anakin's still not a master. And once you get into the Clone Wars, and this is where... Star Wars really got interesting for me, especially as coming into it, being an adult, is like the geopolitical aspects of it. Okay. So, you oh, takes ball on me. The, yeah, it, you, you get into like it, like watching the Clone Wars series. It, it's very much like a Game of Thrones kind of thing to me. You have okay. a lot of parties moving around. You have the the, the Confederate systems. You have the banking clan, and you have the Republic. Mm. And the banking clan is an independent party here funding both sides because they have just a shit yep. ton of money from everywhere. But the other two sides are going at each other all the time. But you have Palpatine and Dooku running both back and forth. So once you get into the, the Clone Wars where you have these battles and things going on and the fighting for systems and territory and trade routes and things, you start to see two Anakins. You see one Anakin as the, I'm calling him the teacher Anakin. So that's the, he's, he's teaching his Padawan the way he, that Obi-Wan taught him. And you see that in him. He's, he behaves a lot like Obi Wan. Uh, he he follows the rules like uh, to an extent. Uh, he follows the rules when he's being watched and when he's with other Jedi and when he's on like the main um, ships and whatever uh, and in meetings and things. So he he's following the order and he, he, that's where he's uh, like a you're like true Jedi. He's like a normal Jedi. He's like a young Obi Wan is how I see him in that. But also on the same side, you have the the field Anakin, where he's a general, he's off on his own with his own troops, and he's like on the ground, and that's when he does what he wants. Like he's he's Anakin there. Like the the teacher Anakin, I feel like isn't him. So he's got this kind of split in him, where he follows the rules, but then he doesn't, and this becomes a problem um, for his Padawan, because his Padawan is constantly being bounced back and forth on. Listen to the Jedi Order. You listen to everything they say, and you don't listen to anything they say. They don't know what they're doing. You have to think in the moment. And you have to only trust yourself and believe in yourself. Well, in a way, she's kind of fortunate. Yeah. To have been trained that way. Yeah, because it, it benefits her in the future. Yeah. Yeah. This kind of um, she she learns to kind of doubt whoever's in charge, which I I think is key to who she becomes. We could do a whole one on, on Ahsoka just because I, I I love her character, but. Um, it becomes a problem with her even when she's a, a Padawan and a youngling because um, she'll go on missions with like Obi-Wan or Kit Fisto or Kiati Mundi or, or any of the other Jedi and she will behave as if she's with Anakin and she can't. She shouldn't and she gets like punished for it. Like, huh. She gets reprimanded for that because she's so used to following the rules and then breaking them. 
like at the drop of a hat yeah. to get what what needs to be done. Right. And that leads to my next point. This is the like the Clone Wars are the dawn of the greater good, Anakin, where you see him transitioning into kind of the Vader mentality that you see of you know following Palpatine, bringing the galaxy together under one. It's like it doesn't matter how many you know Alderons we have to blow up. You know we bring everybody under one thing, and it keeps everybody in line. So you see that with um, like the battles. The sieges and the refugees are a big thing in all of the clo- in a lot of the Clone Wars episodes. Is there will be a, a blockade on a ship and people will be starving, or um, like the Confederate systems will just be bombing and sieging in cities, and the Jedi are sent in to try to get as many people out as possible. Okay. So like all of the Jedi, you know, are on the you know we need to save everybody we can. Like any loss is bad. Like any loss should be on the clone troopers. Like, they are made to be expended. It's like, if we lose anybody, it's got to be the clone troopers. We're just sending them in, just dump them on the droids. Just dump as many clones as possible. We get everybody out, out safe. But Anakin takes it a step further. Like, he understands this loss in, in war, and, like, it's going to happen. And he gets to a point where he just doesn't try to stop it, in a way. He gets, like, in, uh, like, episode two, it's like, careless Anakin... And then in the Clone Wars, it's, like, really careless Anakin. It's, like, he doesn't care about, like, the problem at hand. He cares about just defeating the Confederate systems. He's desensitized. Yeah. He doesn't care if there's a planet left as long as the planet is under the rule of the Republic. So in in this show, is he made out to be a good guy or a bad guy? No, he's a good guy. But you see those moments. There are, there are moments where you see him, like, pushing that that dark side thing that he comes to in episode 3 where he starts really questioning everything that do you Jedi think that's kind of evident or do you have to look for it I think and sometimes it's evident uh, but I think like looking back at the series as a so, whole you can pull out those moments and see them adding up okay. as you go through because like I'm, I'm speaking out like very generally here about the Clone Wars series it's like it's like a, a gradual scale as things go on and you get closer and closer to the end you really start to see him disobeying him doing what he wants him taking alternative motives, you know, listening to Palpatine on something where instead of listening to the Jedi Order or the generals or the admirals or anything there, he's okay. like taking like direct pointers from Palpatine on how something should be handled when he should be listening to the Senate who has passed things down to the generals who has passed things down to the Jedi. They allude to that in the comic too. Yeah. Because I think Palpatine kind of gave him that taste of yeah. you don't have to follow these guys' orders. Exactly. And that's what they, they really hit that in the in that series. So I, I've, I've got written down here, like, Palpatine supports this and keeps pushing this. And um, you get into this Republic-only idea. Like, they get into systems that just want to be independent. Like, they don't want to be involved in the war. They don't want to take sides. They don't want to take sides at all. But, um, like, the Confederate systems push on them, and so, do, so does the Republic, and it creates this battle on this planet that didn't want anything. It, it creates this battle of who's going to run this planet and the people on the planet have no say. It's like, oh, well, droids just showed up one day. Well, now the clones are here, so now we just got to wait and see what happens, everybody. Now the whole planet's going to be blown to shit, and then we're going to come out, you know, 50% less population, and then we're going to be under the government that we <laughs> never asked to be under <laughs> yeah. just because they both arbitrarily chose to land on our planet. Yeah. Um, like, there's, there's one um, series of episodes in the first season where they land on a planet that's inhabited by, like, um, sentient lemur kind of people. Okay. And the um, the Confederate systems land there, and just they um, they just kind of occupy it for a while. And they're the, the people are fine with it. Like, the lemur people are fine with it. But then they start testing weapons on the lemur people. And so then the, uh, like, more, like, they send the clones in and things. But it turns out, like... <laughs> That that was kind of that was a plan to get the, the republic there to push them farther into the, into the that like uh, the outer rim, basically. So and then the republic ta- ends up taking the weapons that they were testing on the lemur people and starts using it against other systems that won't fall in line with the republic. Huh. It's like instead of you know supporting this freedom that the republic touts th- all through the the Clone Wars, they just continue occupying these planets. I mean, they just they push the droids away and they continue occupying, which makes sense once you realize like Dooku and Palpatine are working together, you know, and controlling all of this on a big chessboard. 
but like as you're watching the show, like it starts to become evident, like nobody really wants the Republic where they're going. Nobody really wants the clones because they didn't have any problems right. until they arrived. Yeah, and this is where it, um, like you, uh, especially when in episode three you see Obi Wan arguing with Anakin on how the Republic should be behaving and how the Senate should be, like what the Senate is doing and how far reaching they are, is like Anakin and the other Jedi start to realize what's happening. They start to see like, oh, it's just an occupation force. Like we're just conquering planets that otherwise we had no business in controlling. So I find that, that that's where it gets like the geopolitical stuff is like the Clone Wars turns into the Republic stretching their hands out farther and farther so that once Palpatine has control of the Senate, they have all of those systems. They don't have to go out and hunt <laughs> one sixty six order. Yeah, it's it's over. Yeah, they have all they they have the trade routes. They have the resources. They have everything that they need for the Empire to be the Empire during the Clone Wars. It's brilliant. Yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> and he had the enemy do it for him. Well, it was never the enemy. It was always him. Right. Like he did it. Like but he, the enemy being the Jedi. Yeah, yeah, his he, enemy. He yeah. had hit. He had his enemies do it. Yeah, he had. The, yeah, they made wow. them feel in in control and like they had a say in everything. Did all the groundwork. Yeah, because that's the that's the one thing the Confederate systems didn't have. Is they didn't have the the Jedi because the Jedi backed the Senate because mm-hmm. they it was the Republic. So getting back to Skywalker in th- in in this, he gets it becomes. I mean, all the Jedi pretty much become generals mm-hmm. in this. They they control their own branches their own teams of ships and things and they report to admirals and and up to, up to the chain like the senate and stuff so but with anakin he gets a special clone named rex now rex is is interesting because later on you find out that he pulls out his inhibitor chip so mm-hmm. he doesn't have to take direct orders so he can decide what orders he takes and what he doesn't he decides to take out the inhibitor chip yeah before he takes it out how's that work i don't know how that worked that doesn't make any sense. Well, I just know he took it. He's out. special, okay. <laughs> but if the inhibitor chips will ma- let him make his own decisions, how do you decide to take it out? I don't his know. name's Rex. Why don't all the robots <laughs> take it out? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just okay. well, the 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 thing about the inhibitor chip is it it is what um, ends up controlling them in Order sixty six. So that, that's what ends like it like overwrites them and like forces them to kill yep. the Jedi. That's the main thing about the inhibitor chip. Did didn't Cody? No. I don't know. I, I I mean I'm sure I could look into it. We could find out why Rex or when he had it taken out. I'm not sure. Um, but Rex and his group are like General Skywalker's team. Like they're his like main squad, and they end up starting to be used as a strike team over and over to start doing like the gray area things from the Clone Wars, like doing the things that are kind of questionable, that don't have authorization from anybody that they should. They're just kind of like, oh, we need these people taken care of. We're going to send in Skywalker and, <laughs> and Rex <laughs> and that crew because they're reliable every time. And so they, they start getting, getting the like... the job done. Yeah, and they get more lax and laxed rules. And But then on like... Which the, I'm sure Anakin likes. Yeah, exactly, because he's like, he's sent in to do the dirty work and then come out sparkly clean. Yeah. And this is where you get the the birth of like the the famous five hundred first Legion, is like those are Vader's like troops. Like they just follow Vader. They do I Vader never stuff. Connected that. Yeah. So that's the start of that. Is that's is cool. him in the Clone Wars? Yeah. That is cool. Yeah. So he like hand picked clones from that, and those became the five hundred first. There. Like when you see like them going into the Jedi Temple, and then like after. Uh, like in all the expanded universe stuff in between, like all the tr- the stormtroopers and things that follow him, the ones that survive, like handpicked from the clones, because that was that's his thing. That you see later in the comics, is like he only trusts the clones or droids. But that one took out his neighbor. But that one took out his neighbor. He's a rogue. And he's a rogue. A droid. And so, but to jump forward here a little bit, um, post episode three with Ahsoka, Ahsoka ends up leaving the Jedi Order. Okay. She is falsely accused of being a traitor and leaking tons of info, like a bunch of private stuff, to Dooku. Luckily for her. Well, they, I mean, 
but it turns out it's actually her one of her Padawan friends that does it. But the whole time the Jedi Order has like locked her up and put her in exile, and, like not allowed her to do anything, and like they are preparing to execute her before they figure out that it was all like a, like Dooku's fingers and you know blah blah blah. Like she had nothing to do with it. You know the Jedi executed their own people. Yeah, it's like that. That's a very dark point. Like that's like it's cultish. Yeah. Mm. So like that's what. Ha- happens there in the Clone Wars is they start to not trust anybody because they start to feel like this weird presence of this like they're doing you know what they pr- what they said they would do and what they thought was right but some everything starts to not feel right <laughs> and Ahsoka is just kind of thrown in in front of this pod racer to get run over because like she's close to Anakin too you gotta think about that so she is she has been taught and raised by Anakin in a very similar way that he was with like, oh, you can break the rules because you're good. You're good at it. So like, they're trying to get rid of her. But she doesn't, they don't, don't, and she leaves the Jedi Order. She's like, I'm done. You know, you guys turned against me. I'm not having any more of it. So then... Yeah, and where's all the chicks in the Jedi Order? You see a lot of them in the Clone Wars. Okay, let's I'm say, is like, Ahsoka the only one? No, you've got... I want to hang out with a bunch of dusty old farts all day. <laughs> no, there's a ton of really cool female Jedi. Oh, just didn't make it in, in the, the movies, movies, huh? Yeah, didn't make it in the movies, yeah. There's a couple in the movies. That's why I, I really like the Clone Shock Wars. Shock T? Well, they never even call her by name. She's just standing there. <laughs> Don't give me that bullshit. <laughs> She's in the animated. Yeah. I'm trying to think of Ahs- if Ahsoka was in anything else. She wasn't. She's in the Clone Wars series. I say she was in the Force Unleashed game. No, that was Shock T. Oh, Shock T? Yep, you hunt down Shock T in that game. Okay. But same race, though. What? Same Aren't race, they? yeah. Yeah. So what happens is um, Ahsoka and Rex live through Order 66, but fake their deaths and bury, like, Ahsoka buries her lightsabers and Rex, Rex ends up dying saving Ahsoka, but Ahsoka, like, Dude. buries all her shit <laughs> Spoilers. This, this is like expanded. This is like. Oh. This is like. This is like during episode three. So, like, you could, like, read this. You know, this is like the first chapter of the Ahsoka book. Spoil- hey, if you guys haven't watched Star Wars, don't watch this. Yeah. <laughs> just so you know, spoilers. So, Ahsoka just goes into hiding. Um, okay. And then, like. I'm not gonna, Like, the book is great, and we could talk a whole podcast about the book, but um, she gets ends up starting to get back involved with the rebellion um, but then she figures out that Anakin is Vader mm. and that is just soul crushing for her I saw that clip yeah like she, she refuses to believe it and like just about goes nuts because like he was the only person who believed her through all of the like the trials and the accusations that, that the, the Jedi Order drug her through like he was the only person that stood up for her everybody else turn their backs on her as a traitor. And then it... He ends up being a traitor. Yeah. Hmm. So like, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the of the Clone Wars just because it, it I really feel like it, it knits together that arc of who Anakin is uh, and then like why he becomes the person he does in Episode 3 and then in turning into Vader. I don't, I don't know if what I've said, you know, I've kind of jumped around quite a bit, but it really does. I I, I, w- I would love to sit down and watch it again. Uh, I, I feel like it's often left out. Like when it comes to the prequels, people really uh, kind of hark on it a lot. Mm-hmm. They give it a, they give it a bad rap. But I feel like if you look at all of the prequel stuff together, and like yeah, it takes for it's, there's five seasons of the Clone Wars, but it's a good show, and it, it really knits together. If you can watch those three movies and the Clone Wars series, I really feel like all the prequel stuff with George. And the weird midichlorian stuff. I feel like there's enough classic Star Wars stuff there to get over the weird stuff, the prequels. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, you know, maybe it's just the prequels weren't, I don't know, portrayed. There wasn't enough information there to kind of get the, the characters and their motives Expressed. Yeah, I, I really feel like the, like even Obi Wan, like yeah. understanding like what he came from as a young Padawan into a young Knight and Master, 
and then like trying to rein in Anakin because the whole time too like Anakin's doing all this stuff Obi-Wan is held accountable because he, Anakin is still his Padawan yeah so Obi-Wan is, is also wrestling this whole time like no wonder he runs off yeah he's like screw this <laughs> shit dude. exactly because the, the whole time he is um, he's required to bring results and just because he can't monitor Anakin 100% of the time he's responsible even though the results get done because Anakin does them the way he wants to. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, you, you did the job, but you didn't follow, you know, you made a PB&J sandwich, but you used grape jam instead of strawberry. It's like, well... I like grape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> grape gets the job done. <laughs> but, the, like, the whole time you see Obi-Wan becoming kind of that nervous and cautious that you see him in Episode 3 as, because, because of what he's seeing happen. Yeah. It's not his fault. Yeah, it's... It, like, what's he supposed to do? Like, he can't control everybody. He doesn't want to. Right. So that's, uh, that's been Ethan ranting about how good the Clone Wars is and why it's an important part of the Star Wars universe. I, was gonna, I want to pick it up now. If Could you, like, recite all that again when I'm trying to fall asleep tonight? <laughs> yeah. Aww. I'm just kidding. I love talking about it. <laughs> That'd be great. Thank you. Because you get into, you even get into like the huts, and like why and how they're in power and how they played into the Clone Wars. Wait, who are the huts? Job of the hut. Oh, the big slug. I thought. Well, you said hut, and I thought like something someone lives in. Oh. And I'm like, wait, the these pizza. are people. Oh, dude, the pizza huts. Yeah, the pizza huts. Uh, dude. Um, okay, so wait, so there's stuff about the huts. There's mm-hmm. more than just Jabba. Yeah. I thought there's he was like a, the only a one. There's a whole I thought he was the hut. Nope. He's there's a whole family of them, and like they're doing. Like Ew. A, it's like a royal thing, isn't it? Yeah, they're what? they're they're like um, royal gangster slugs. royalty. Yeah, there's man, a lot of Star Wars to keep track of. Yeah, um, but I encourage you if, if if at all you you enjoyed um, Ahsoka in the Clone Wars series. If anybody's listening that has made it this far, <laughs> read the Ahsoka book. If you can't bring yourself to do that, watch like the the last three or four episodes of season two of Rebels. Um, like I've enjoyed the show, but really, like the Ahsoka parts are so good. I just can't get past that main character. He I looks mean, too doofy. There's like Ahsoka comps and things yeah. from that online. Like totally check those. Yeah, out. Like I've, I've seen that Tie Fighter battle with yeah. Vader and Ahsoka. Yeah, where she starts to sense it. Like mm-hmm. they do such a good job with how those two characters come together, especially for a show that I don't know if like the, I don't know if the original Clone Wars is canon even anymore. Mm-hmm. But they bring her back. Good question. And do her and Anakin's relationship like so well? Like it's like I I, I showed Paisley the the video there a couple cool. weeks ago and like I liked it. It it breaks you up, man. It's a cool fight. Uh, I have not it's seen cool, the fight scene. It's cool I've only seen the maybe we can watch scene. it after this because I mean you know what happens. Yeah. Right? So. Oh. Cool. So I like, can't wait to talk about those Vader comics. I oh, <laughs> love those so much. But before we do that, is there anything else we should bring up in episode three that's kind of definitive to er- Anakin's character? I, re- I feel like the... Of Anakin- course there's the epic fight scene between Anakin and Obi-Wan. Right, but I feel like um, I, even without the Clone Wars TV series, like when he kills Dooku at the beginning, yeah. like that is like an abrupt, this is where Anakin is at right now. Like the last Which time is he, a big step. Yeah. Because the last time you saw him, he was literally trying to kill Dooku and couldn't. Um, it's like a piece of cake now. Yeah. It's so like, if you skip over the Clone Wars, that's going to be totally jarring. Like, whoa! Which is how it was. Yeah. I mean, because the series hadn't been out yet. He got yeah. good. He got good. Which I like to see. Mm. Mm. He's hot and he's good now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was hot before, wasn't he? But or now he's still good. the little braid thing. He had the yeah, braid. Yeah, okay, he had a little braid. And this little like little you know, big ball sack yeah, bun man, on the back oh of his God. head. If I had a Padawan braid, you wouldn't like that. No, I'm just like remembering episode two now, and like maybe she did seduce him because like I don't see that little braid <laughs> seducing anybody. Like, ugh. He's got the little rat tail and his little ball yeah, sack the, bun on the back. Oh. Yeah. Maybe he did. Maybe she seduced him. I don't know. I think Ian McGregor pulled it off more than... Oh, my God. Aiden well, he did. looked great. Ian McGregor, he looks good in everything. I, mean. I love Episode 3 Obi-Wan so much. I, I love Episode 1 and Episode 3 Obi-Wan. 
I hate everything about episode two. Everything. Uh, <laughs> Dang. I really like it as an appetizer to the animated series. <laughs> that's, that's how I view it. It's like, it's an appetizer. Because <laughs> I, I just, oh, man, they did, they did something wrong. It was something. They did something weird with it. I'm not going to say they did anything wrong. It wasn't like any other Star Wars movie. Yeah, too political, I think. Yeah, they, they, it was. It was so political and in, in such a compact way. Like, like I keep repeating, like if you if you see it in conjunction with that Clone Wars series, where it becomes like Star Wars, Game of Stars. <laughs> you know, like that episode becomes so much cooler because you start to see like this this revolution. You know me, I'm a sucker for revolution stories. Yeah, revolution stories are cool. So that brings us to what I said at the beginning. And to sum everything up, is this really funny 4chan post that I saw on Reddit one day at work. And, you know, inspired me to kind of... This, that's, this post is what inspired me to want to talk about, you know, Anakin's character and people kind of misunderstanding him as this angsty crybaby. Yeah. Um. So, I guess I'll just kind of list this off. Go ahead and read it. That's how it's I think it. I've, I've seen this before. I really feel like it. It does a good job of. But of, maybe other people haven't. Yeah. Haven't yeah. seen it. So. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll post the picture Sorry, on. Thank you. So people can read along and so I can give this credit where it's due. And um, um, but this guy just kind of lays it out straight, uh, with Anakin's character, and it starts with. Uh, do you want me to read it? Paisley, yes, you Paisley's should read the it. good reader. You're a great reader. I'm good at reading. Paisley reads good. Okay, here we go. In a word. I was about to do that. <laughs> Damn it, sorry. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Am I close enough? Yeah, don't be afraid to get too close. All right. Well, I want to be able to read it. And you can read it right here on this on this one. Yeah, I typed this it This is the out. exact thing? Yep. Oh, okay, cool. Let me, well, you can edit this part. Okay. Be a slave until you are nine. Be separated from your mother and indoctrinated by emotionless, celibate, monks. Jedi treat you like shit because you're different because you joined too late and the masters don't trust you. You're told to suppress all your emotions. You're groomed by the greatest manipulator in the galaxy and he's your only non-Jedi friend and the only one that's not stupidly hard on you all the time for your human mistakes. Be given a god complex because you're told you're literally the chosen one and soon to be the most powerful person of all time. Have nightmares about your mother suffering and dying, but be told by a Jedi to ignore it. Finally get the chance to see your mom. She was tortured and raped and dies in your arms. <laughs> have to fight on the front lines of a galactic war for three years. Have premonitions about your wife dying the same way the ones about your mom came true. Freak out. <laughs> the Jedi still don't trust you. They ask you to spy on your best non-Jedi friend. They put you on the council, but they don't promote you to master, even though you're in the top five strongest Jedi in the galaxy, which makes you feel like a joke. Still turn in Sith Lord, who promised to save your wife because of your loyalty to the Jedi. That's a big thing that's overlooked. Yeah. Jedi still don't trust you again, and don't take you to arrest the most powerful villain in the galaxy. Got to help anyway, and see Jedi who was a dick to you your whole life, about to break his own rules and murder a prisoner, Fucking hypocrite. See last chance to save your beloved wife. Freak out in a split second decision and cut douchebag Jedi's hand off. In here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you feel like you fucked up so hard, you have no choice but to join the dark side. Maybe at least you can save your wife this way. What you don't. What you don't. <laughs> but in the moment. Yeah. Maybe. That's your last chance. Yeah. It's like, so I can either go with these guys... And know my wife's gonna die. Well, that's what he believed. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what he had to believe. He saw his mom die. Yeah. yeah. And now it's the same, the same things happening to his wife, so which like, is the only person he has left. The the whole time the Jedi Council is telling him to ignore it. Right. But Palpatine is the only person that acknowledges that it's a real thing that it's okay to be worried about. Yeah. Like the Jedi could have at least been like. Hey, maybe this is one of those self-fulfilling things. Maybe we should look into this. Hey, yeah, that one about your mom came true, didn't it? I mean, you are the most powerful thing in the galaxy. Maybe yeah. we should listen to you, dude. Hey, dude, why don't you just, you know, go on vacation for a little bit? Padme is also, <laughs> like, a really, really important politician. Maybe we should listen to you. Yeah. But they didn't. They're like, dude, it'll be fine. Oh, just, he's just crying wolf. Yeah, don't worry about it, man. Just take it easy, God. He's just the chosen one. <laughs> he's always freaking out about shit all the time, dude. 
So yeah, that that I love that post. No, I think that's a great post because yeah. he just lays it down. I was like, you guys need to stop bitching about Anakin. Well, I think too, like it, it's it's hard to tr- to translate, you know, those things into a movie mm-hmm. and into stories. Oh yeah, it's very subtle, but like if you really think about it. Yeah, I think it comes down to like, like I said earlier, it's looking at the prequels as an overarching narrative rather than each individual movie. Like yeah, you know, they can kind of be a pain in the butt at times. You know, they do goofy things that you don't quite understand. But when you look at it, and you, you especially with Anakin, like he's such a pivotal character. Like I really don't feel like they did a horrible job. No, I just, I just can't admit that they did a horrible job. And I think some of that comes from the. The flack that the prequels got. Yeah. Like, Hayden did a great job with Anakin. Anakin was a great character. So was Obi-Wan. Yeah. But, like, I don't know why people goof on him so hard. I don't know he was a bad actor. Yeah. Like, that... Oh, gosh. That, I don't I was, think he did such a bad job at all. What, I don't know what people... I really don't know where that's... Is that from maybe, old fans? Maybe. Just viewing it, like, really harshly? And I think they have this idea of Darth Vader as this mysterious, enigmatic person, this force that's not grounded in reality. He doesn't have a history. He doesn't have reasons for doing what he does. And then finding out, you know, of course you find out that he's Luke and Leia's father. Yeah. But still, that was never elaborated upon. So, like, maybe they just liked not knowing. Yeah, I think... So maybe any kind of backstory for him they they reject. Yeah, like, now that you bring that up, I really feel like people feel like they over-explained Anakin and Vader. Mm. Um, which I can understand. Like they, they really gave him a lot, but I feel like when you boil it down, like it still works. Yeah, it's necessary too. And to me, it's so much. It's it's really cool. Like knowing like Anakin has literally had a hand in killing off everyone <laughs> except Palpatine. That well, he, that he, and 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 still Obi Wan and Ahsoka, Mace Windu. I mean, he didn't have a hand in killing Yoda, but. You know, he 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 eliminated everyone and everyone that supported the people that never believed in him mm-hmm. and never never trusted him and never believed him. Dude, this might be Game of Thrones spoilers. I was gonna say, like, dude, he pulled fucking Cersei. <laughs> people don't know when or where that happens, so so never mind. Oh, that's all I'll say. Yeah, but that's kind of you go, Darth Vader. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, he's 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 space Hitler, but God, he's so fucking cool. Yeah, he earned it. I, well, but I okay, think, well, I don't know. Why do people call him Space Hitler? Well, I mean, they, they go through and exterminate tons of people and kill tons of people who... It's not, like, racial-based, No, though. it's not racial-based. It's like, you disagree with us I running mean, the galaxy. Yeah, so he's a tyrant yeah. and a dictator, but well, I don't like know. a Mussolini. I guess I'm just sick of everyone that's evil Space is moves. a Hitler. Right. It's like, well... Could we be a little more specific, though? Yeah. Like, if you just said everyone who's evil, oh, man, what, wow, what a Hitler. Yeah. It's like, come on, you lose this punch a little bit. I, I yeah. would not call Anakin a Hitler. I'm not, I mean. No, no. Darth Vader. Yeah, he's a Darth Vader. Darth Vader's his own special kind of bad guy. I think that's a good way to start the next podcast. Yeah, God, I can't remember. Or wait part two of this one. Not necessarily the next, but there yeah, will be a it'll be sequel. Part two. We've got to talk about Darth Vader. <laughs> There's a lot. I'm looking at my shelf. <laughs> I've got a shrine to Vader. We got a lot of Vader fans in this apartment, uh, and in our lineage. But to me, like, Anakin is a is quintessential to, to Vader for me. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, they... I could I could not appreciate Vader the way I do. Yeah. Like to me, my my appreciation for Vader and subsequently. Anakin is the same reason I have appreciation for Obi Wan is is all the stuff they went through, and what they did about it. Yeah, is what I love about them. And they're cute. And they're cute. <laughs> they're hunks. You know McGregor. Dude, that that last fight scene. Just thinking about Mustafar, dude, gives That's me goosebumps. Yeah. What a good. You know what? Get, yay! Give the prequels a break. Yeah. For that yeah, one that, scene. Come that, on. It, that and the Darth Maul fight scene will forever. Yeah. Save the prequels for me. And then, um... Because damn that choreography. <laughs> yeah. And you can say what what you want about, you know, actors or emotion in the prequels. Like, you can't watch those fights and tell me there's not emotion there. My God. 
Oh, so good. I, I just want to watch. We should we should stop this far. so we can we should watch the Ahsoka fight. Let's let's stop this. Let's watch that Ahsoka all right, fight. That's all for now. Um, Thanks for listening. What do you think, Pace? Uh, six out of ten. Wait, are Splodoinkle. we rating this? Splodoinkle. Oh, Splodoinkle. I guess what, we should. The, what am I rating? I mean, Anakin or the prequels? Am I rating Anakin? Rate Anakin. Rate Anakin. Yeah, as a character? As a character. I guess this we kind of... the character analysis of Baradin for Anakin. Well, I guess we kind of covered I'm the not, prequels a lot, too. I don't but. judge characters on whether or not I think they're a good or a bad person, or whether or not I like them. But like, how many Splodoinkles? I, I judge characters... <laughs> I'm going into that. I judge characters on how interesting they are, and we just talked about Anakin for a fucking hour, so 10 out of 10 Splodoinkles for Anakin Skywalker. Hey, I'll take it. Oh, yeah, I'll take that. But what about his robot arm? Uh, We're not doing that. We're not doing that. I'm stopping it. We will someday. It's going to be my, like life goal to persuade you that robot arms are cool. It's not going to happen.